Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi, this is Azim News, still with me Vanessa. Thailand's transport minister inspected international airport ahead of November reopening. Thailand's transport minister Saksiam Chitkop on October 20 inspected the readiness of international airports in the country ahead of November 1 reopening after almost two years of shutting its borders due to the global coronavirus outbreak. The country is forging ahead with a quarantine-free reopening plan next month of 17 provinces to vaccinated arrivals from low-risk countries included will be destinations like Pattaya, Hua Chin, Chiang Mai, and Bangkok. We are reopening the country step by step in three stages. The November 1st is the first step, which the Prime Minister Prayut chan expects foreign tourists and investors from at least 10 countries from health safe zones, as well as doing great financially, can come to visit and spend in the country. According to Saksiam, the goal is to allow visitors to breeze through procedures at the airport as much as possible, where the swaps and ATK tests can be done once they arrive at their hotels and other accommodations. The procedures that we have put in place are all very systematically thought through. The entire time a visitor will spend from getting through the terminal gates to leaving the airport will take no more than 25 minutes. This will be transferred from the Phuket sandbox because in Phuket they will have to get their noses swapped too. However, the airport directors here have advised that if the government wants to see a seamless flow of tourists getting into the country, we should agree to take on the basis of 72-hour nose swab test and at least two doses of vaccination approved by WHO. Thailand has recorded nearly 1.8 million cases and 18,500 486 fatalities overall on Wednesday, more than 98% in the past seven months. Former mayor of Chicago stressed the role of Japan to counter China and defense handling of Chicago race issues. Former mayor of Chicago, Ram Emanuel, testified before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee as he seeks confirmation to serve as U.S. ambassador to Japan, where he stressed the U.S. alliance with Japan is key to counter China and defended his handling of racial issues as mayor of the third largest U.S. city. We are strong because of our allies and our unity. China has one strategy, a one-way road to Beijing's benefit. And everybody in that region, most importantly Japan, know that a United States doubling down on its commitments in the Indo-Pacific area makes them more secure, makes the region more safe and open, and it's a values-based system, not based on one country's proclivity. And anything that challenges that must be met with the united force of all of our allies and friends in the region. Leaders of the United States, Japan, India and Australia, the so-called Quad, have vowed they to pursue a free and open Indo-Pacific region, undaunted by coercion taking a united front amid shared concerns about China. What we build in partnership with Japan over the next three years will determine America's posture for the next 30. The challenges and opportunities we face underscore the imperative of strengthening our bonds with our closest ally, Japan. Some critics have faulted Emmanuel, 61, for his handling of racial issues as mayor of the third largest U.S. city. Four Chicago police officers were fired in 2019 for covering up the shooting death of a black teenager. Laquan McDonald in Chicago in 2014, a case that fueled racial tensions and sparked calls from critics for Emmanuel's resignation. In June, when his expected ambassadorial nomination first surfaced, Victims and relatives of victims of police violence in Chicago issued a statement calling Biden's plans abhorrent. Emmanuel previously served as chief of staff to former President Barack Obama. Emmanuel headed the finance committee for Bill Clinton's presidential campaign in 1992 and later served as a senior advisor to Clinton on policy and strategy. He was Obama's chief of staff for over a year before designing to run for election as mayor of Chicago. A White House official, speaking on condition anonymity, expressed confidence that Emmanuel will win Senate confirmation. Singapore first flight under an expanded quarantine-free travel program. Singapore's first flight under an expanded vaccinated travel lane program landed from Amsterdam with around 80 passengers on board. 
passenger Andrea Mullens, who is a resident of Singapore, arrived with her daughter after visiting family in Netherlands. Yeah, that's perfect, Happy. is it? Yeah, it's, it's really convenient. She can uh, go to school right away uh, after we have the results, of course. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. Yeah. In the other part, her husband said... I think in this world you, you need to take uh, safety and precaution very, uh, very dearly. And I think the Singaporean government is doing that quite well, or very well. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do appreciate that, uh, that the family can travel again. Uh, I'm planning now myself to go next week on, uh, on a VTL flight back uh, just to me at the headquarters of uh, the company I'm running here. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. Singapore Airlines said flight SQ329 landed at around 6.37 a.m. after delay in departure from Amsterdam due to air traffic congestion. Singapore already have vaccinated travel lane arrangements with Germany and Brunei, which allow quarantine-free travel if passengers pass their COVID-19 test. Eight other countries, including the Netherlands, Britain, France, Spain, and the United States, were added on October 19, while South Korea will also join on November 15. The Southeast Asian nation, one of the world's biggest travel and finance hubs, is home to Asian headquarters of thousands of global companies whose executives have long relied on Singapore's connectivity. However, a full return to normal operations is a long way off. The International Airport Transport Association estimates global aviation industry loses from the pandemic will be a towering $200 billion for 2020 to 2022, and loses in Asia alone were close to $50 billion in 2020. International travel in the Asia-Pacific region was at around 4% of 2019 levels in August. China Evergrande Grande Group shares fall in resumed trade. Shares of China Evergrande Group slid as much as 14% after a deal to sell a 2.6 billion stake in its property services unit fell through in the latest blow to the developer whose massive debts to woos have threatened global markets. Evergrande said it had scrapped a deal to sell a 50.1% stake in Evergrande Property Service Group LTD to Hobson Development Holdings LTD as the smaller rival had not met the prerequisite to make a general offer. Actually, Hobson and Evergrande have unable to agree to the deal term, so the deal is suspended right now. Therefore, the um, Evergrande stock stuck trading today, and uh, the investor have concerned about Evergrande over 300 billion bill. And I think the lesson we learned from this deal is that turning a blind eye to the crisis is making crisis worse. Both sides appear to trade blame for the setback with Hobson saying it does not accept there is any substance whatsoever to Evergrande's termination of the sales agreement and it is exploring options to protect its legitimate interest. And Evergrande is highly leveraged and its expansion of fabulous type of business has failed, like mineral water, tourism as well as its electric vehicle business. The deal is developers second to collapse amid its scramble to raise cash in recent weeks. Two sources told Reuters last week the 1.7 billion safe of its Hong Kong headquarters had failed amid buyer worries of Evergrande's dire financial situation. The latest setback also came just ahead of the expire of a 30-day grace period of Evergrande to pay 83.5 million in coupon payments for an offshore bond at which time China's most indebted developer will be considered in default. Chinese mainland reports new local transmitted of COVID-19 cases. The Chinese mainland reported 13 new locally transmitted COVID-19 cases, the National Health Commission said in its daily report on Thursday. Of new local cases, five were reported in Jiangsu, four in Inxia, and two each in Inner Mongolia and Hubei. Among the new local cases, one in Gansu was reconfirmed to be active case from a symptomatic case, according to the commission. The Commission also reported 21 new imported cases, of which six were reported in Shanghai and one each in Henan Province and Guangdong Province. New imported cases, one in Henan Province was reconfirmed to be active case from a symptomatic case, no new deaths related to the COVID-19 epidemic and no suspected cases. A total of 34 cases were discharged from hospital and 1,300 close contacts were released from medical observation and the number of severe cases decreased by one compared to that of the previous day. A total of 9,459 imported cases had been reported on the mainland by the end of Wednesday last week, 9,038 had been discharged from hospital following recovery and 421 remained hospitalized with no one being in severe condition.
No deaths had been reported among the imported cases, and there is one remaining suspected COVID-19 case. The mainland had reported a total of 96,622 confirmed COVID-19 cases. Of them, 91,494 had been discharged from hospital following recovery, and 4,636 had died as a result of the virus. Currently, 492 confirmed cases remain in hospitals for treatment, with no one being in severe conditions. There is one suspected COVID-19 case remaining on the mainland, and 22,383 of the 1,218,545 tracked close contacts were still under medical observation. A total of 12,003 COVID-19 patients in Hong Kong, 66 in Macau, 13,742 in Taiwan had been discharged from hospital after recovery. Japan's Princess Mako the Imperial niece will be married next week. Japan's Princess Mako, the Emperor's niece, will be married next week after years of criticism over her fiancé that led to their marriage being postponed for three years and resulted in her being diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Mako, who turns 30, will lose her royal status after marrying commoner Kei Kumoro, also 30. The two are set to live in the United States, where Kumoro has a job with a law firm. In 2016, Princess Mako appeared with her younger sister, Kako, and 10-year-old brother, Prince Hisahito, who is third in line to the imperial throne as the only male of his generation. I'll be happy if I can make a worm and a comfortable home full of smiles with Mr. Kumoro. This marriage will mainly consist of filling paperwork, then holding a news conference. While marrying out of a royalty isn't uncommon in Japan, the lack of pomp for a royal wedding is Mako even turned down the usual $1.3 million payment given to women leaving the family. An engagement first cheered by the Japanese people soon became troubled as tabloids reported a financial dispute between Kumoro's mother and her former fiancé, with the men claiming mother and son hadn't repaired a debt of about $35,000. Komuro had said the money was provided as a gift, not a loan. In 2021, he issued a 24 pages explanation and also said he would pay a settlement. Komuro returned to Japan in September, but his casual ponytail caused the media frenzy as it was deemed disrespectful. He visited Mako's parents earlier this week in a dark suit and tie ponytail shorn. Tabloid still snipped he arrived late due to traffic jams. Ordinary Japanese have mixed feelings. Chinese president continues inspects agriculture development. Chinese president Xi Jinping continued inspection in East China's Shandong province, learning the development of modern agriculture and local people's life, and visiting an olive field in the city of Dongying. She also general secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, visited a high-tech demonstration area for agriculture industry, a residential community and a research institute of oil exploration and a drilling platform of the Shengli oil field. He checked on the comprehensive use of the saline alkali soil and the development of modern agriculture in the Yellow River Delta, the relocation of residents in the floodplain of the Yellow River and the innovative development of the Shengli oil field. The Korean series Squid Game Mania lift Netflix. Netflix global sensation Squid Game helped lure more new customers than expected. The world's largest streaming service, as it predicted, a packed lineup, will further boost signs up through the end of the year. After a sharp slowdown in the first half of 2021, Netflix added 4.38 million subscribers from July through September to reach 213.6 million worldwide. Wall Street analysts had projected 3.86 million editions according to the definitive data. Netflix enjoyed a subscriber boom last year as recent kept audiences at home, but growth stalled early this year. You know, I don't really have ambitions like that. The, really, the main reason I did it is because I love and trust Bradley Cooper so much. He actually is a, a good friend of mine, and I love the experience of working with him, but I don't know if everything's going to be like working with Bradley Cooper, so I, 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 don't, I don't anticipate that. I'd... At the same time, Walt Disney's Disney Plus AT&T's HBO Max and other competitors bolstered their offerings. Netflix blamed the earlier weakness in part on a thin slate of new programming caused by production shutdowns from the pandemic. Then, South Korean drama Squid Game debuted on September 17 and surprised executives by becoming the streaming service's most-watched original series in its first month. 
On Tuesday, Netflix said a mind-blogging 142 million households had watched the dark drama about people who compete in a deadly competition to erase financial debt. Shares of Netflix were close to even in after-hours trading at $641 following the earnings report. Well, you know, deserve is a very difficult word in life. I don't know if anybody deserves anything they get, good or bad. You just take it as it comes. I am honored that I got a good card in this deck. I have worked very hard in my life. The fact that anybody would recognize that outside of me and my family is amazing to me. And I'm very grateful, especially given my past experience. Why did you want to be a comedian? I personally am not afraid of other people's freedom of expression. I don't use it as a weapon. It just makes me feel better. And I'm sorry if I hurt anybody, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada, yada. Everything I'm supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Separately, Netflix employees are staging a walked out in unprecedented show of defiance to protest the streaming giant's decision to release comedian Dave Chappelle's controversial new comedy special, which they say ridicules trans people. A group of employees, calling itself Team Trans, has scheduled a rally outside Netflix's 13 story Sunset Boulevard offices in Los Angeles, where activists, public figures, and other supporters plan to present Chief Content Officer Ted Sarandos with a list of asks. That's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice weekdays ahead. <laughs>